How's it going today? We're back for another episode here on New Scotland Fishing Adventures. I'm William as always. Where we're at is out in Lawrencetown, Nova Scotia. So with me today, I've got, uh, I'm actually visiting uh, a friend of mine's property. So this is Clarence and he uh, retired how many years ago? 2003. He's also, he's a fellow wounded uh, uh, veteran. He started his own organization uh, called uh, Lures for Vets. Feel free to check out Clarence's stuff and uh, he's, he's got all kinds of uh, knickknacks on there for uh, spinning. Uh, he's got some fly rigs set up on there. Uh, he's building all of his own product out of his house and right now it's it's a hobby business for him and he loves doing it. Yeah, it's my distraction and, and it gives me a chance to help out other organizations by uh, selling the tackle and what I do is take 10% of that tackle and of the sales and give it to different organizations. That's excellent. So what we've got planned for today is just basically we're here on the Annapolis River. We're in Clarence's backyard, literally his backyard. This province and this region in Nova Scotia specifically is well known for shad fishing. Shad are a sea run species of fish. Uh, they run up the Annapolis River and tributaries off the Annapolis and various other rivers along the eastern seaboard of northern US. If you're out new, new to shad fishing, and you're with some, some people who are veterans to shad fishing, they might play a practical joke on you and take that sucker home and, and uh, fillet it up and, <laughs> and pan fry it and eat it. You'll never do it again after um, because it is a very bony fish. It's a white meat, uh, but it is a very bony fish. Scaly? Yeah, a lot of scales. You have to descale them, kind of like what you would do with salmon, but uh, more so. The scales are quite thick and uh, quite large. You can eat it, I'm not saying you can't, it's just it's a difficult fish to prepare. But what a lot of people do use shad for is actually bait for striped bass. So those are the, the, uh, the types of bait that people get the big, big striped bass on and like trophy fish. Hey guys, so if you're wondering about rig setups, uh, for me, I've got my eight weight fly rod here. It's a Temple Fork Outfitters okay. uh, TFO BBK and uh, I basically I made this rod. I bought it as a blank and then I made up the entire uh, rod section here. So if you're interested to know what I've got, I've got a uh, uh, guideline bullet line okay. eight weight and then from there um, I've got my 10 pound test leader and then I've got a I'm running down to an eight pound test tippet and then my shad fly. My shad fly is white and red or white and pink and it's weighted. Um, I've kept the barb on it just for the sake of the shad. Uh, they have a tendency to uh, grab on and they'll, uh, they, can, they can let go and so for these guys I'd rather guarantee the, 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 uh, the hookup and then I can They've got a pretty tough jaw, so even with the barb, you can remove the barb quite easily and easy release if you want to release. And uh, we're gonna be pretty much releasing what we catch tonight. But uh, yeah, if this color sequence doesn't work, then I've got all kinds of different flies, but she is pretty heavy and it's quite large as you can see.
Clarence is just reeling one in here. Don't shoot me because I'm on a spin cast. <laughs> Yes, I do over the fly rocks. Over the rocks? Where's the net? You need the net? Yeah. You need a bigger net? Yeah. Here we go, folks. A la shed. Nice colors, too. Yeah. Short cast there. Fish on. Oh, you bastard. Oh. Yeah, but they're not. Uh, you're gonna have to switch the flies out. I have my hopes up there with the one take there. Go. Fish on. Gotcha. Can you point that GoPro behind me towards here? Here you go. Thanks, man. Just talking about the size and switching out the fly, and then all of a sudden he's like, I'll take. He let go. He let go. That's the one thing with them. They they bite, and you might not even have them hooked in. They just, like you said, that's kind of like what he did. Just spat it out at me. Yeah. Like here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's wild. There we go. Gotcha. Yep. Come on. Where is he at? Right there. Here's my footing. I'm bringing him right to you. Yep. Oh, come on. He's got a lot of power. Oh, yeah, they do. Head up. Yeah. Here we go. Nice play, Don. Nice colors, too. Beautiful colors. Easy purple. And Big old scales. Nice little size. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. <coughs> that hurt my key. Good. Holy cow, he's got a grip on that. Oh, yeah, they do. Player? Yep. He's got a grip and a half on that. Go, easy out. Another one fucking jump. Nice little re release. Good to go. All right. And, oh, there he goes. There he goes. Woo! I want to thank Clarence here for letting us use his property. Find a spot, come out, throw a line. But Clarence, thank you very much, man. You are quite welcome, Appreciate sir. It.
Cool. Get out of you. Hey guys. So this is the uh, second part of this uh, this episode that you guys are watching. We're still shad fishing for American shad here on the, well, actually right now we're on the Nicktaw River. Uh, we just went through what they locally around here call Shad Corner, which is a section of the Annapolis, which is just back and around the corner over here, um, where basically, the Annapolis intersects where the Nicktaw runs off of the Annapolis as a tributary and it runs into the Annapolis. So they call that Shag Corner and it's a, it's a pretty interesting spot for trout fishing, for striped bass fishing and for shad fishing. Shad fishing there is quite, quite popular. Uh, so popular that in fact right now there's in a stretch of about 150 meters in length. There's about 20 people in there fishing um, all along the uh, the entire bank. They're spaced out quite a ways right now. I've seen it uh, pretty bad where, you know, you're 20, 30 feet spacing uh, between people fishing. But if you're in there fly fishing for shad, which is an absolute blast, um, it can be a little bit more challenging because of the limited space for back casting and, and uh, all the people that are around you. So what I've done is I've just basically moved up the river further here and like I said now we're into the Nicktaw which is a nice little section. Not a lot of people come up here and the shad do run through here in large numbers and it provides a lot of opportunities. Um, just to show you what I'm looking at right now I got Olive out with me tonight too. Right, Olive? Are you good? So, where I'm headed is, I'm actually just gonna come back down here a ways. What are you working on? What do you got? Is this stick big enough? <laughs> Go get it. Yeah. Are you being silly? Hey guys, so I've made a quite a number of casts already. I'm using the same fly that I was last night. It's a red and white pattern fly. Um, you can kind of see it right there, hopefully. OK, 
okay? It is weighted. I've got it weighted with, uh, with uh, copper wire along the shank of the hook. And then I've got bead head, um, uh, barbell head, excuse me. Then I've got a barbell head, okay? What I'm doing, however, right now is in this current, this current is moving right now about a foot and a half to two feet a second. So what I'm noticing happening is this thing in still water sinks pretty quick, uh, probably at a rate of six inches per second. However, in the current, it's only sinking about half an inch per second kind of idea. It's really slow. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm taking an egg shot, all right, a fairly large one, and I'm going to add it about 16 inches up the line, just to add more weight so I can get down. Because the thing that's driving me a little bit nuts is I know this is a great area and there's an abundance of shad in here because they are rising all around me here. Um, I'm getting tail rises and all that kind of stuff, especially a little bit further up here where I'm casting into at the base of, uh, at the base of those trees out in the middle where the ground is let go from its, its tip. It's a typical uh, rest spot for them. And so I know that if I put this on, I can get down to where they're resting and hopefully maybe entice them to take. So here's hoping. So the other thing I've done here, and hopefully you guys can see that, I got my split shot there, and I got a knot before it, and I got a knot after it. Right there you can see it against the water. And that prevents it from moving up or down the line. And because it's egg shaped, it also flows nicely with my back casting. Uh, they're specifically designed for fly rod. Anywhere from six inches down to 10 inches um, is, you know, your, where you want to get down to relatively quickly. And then your shag can be resting in that target zone or deeper down as far as three feet. Um, they generally will occupy a fairly large uh, volume of water because they come up in the river stacked and uh, they'll come through in large numbers when they, when they make a push. Um, very much like salmon, they'll, they'll go so far and then they'll rest, and then they'll make a push and then they'll rest. And when they do come up, they come up in large numbers. I'm feeling pretty confident about my setup right now. I know I'm getting down to the uh, target zone for the fish. I just gotta get all set up again. I did unfortunately have a mishap of knots. And if you do get a bunch of knots in your line and you notice it on your cast when you go to retrieve your, uh, your previous cast, when you're fly fishing and that happens, don't rush it because that's when you're gonna end up tying more knots and it's gonna turn into a living nightmare. One of the beautiful thing about shad fishing is you don't really need to be too cautious about your cast. You don't have to worry about being delicate with your cast because shad, they don't spook like a trout will. I just had a take. Um, they come up and they are king of the river at the time that they come up and they'll push other things right out of the water right out of its way, including trout. But because they don't spook so much, um, you can get away with being a little bit sloppy on a cast and still have success on the river. Fish on, baby. See that olive? Watch out, girl. Another way. 
Nope. Oh, he's coming towards me. Tight line, tight line. Goodness, I feel like a contortionist right now. <laughs> In the net, woo! Yeah, baby. Uh. Shot on the fly in the Nicktaw River. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave them relatively close to the water here because my plan is to return them. But just so you guys can see, beautiful rainbow colors on them. Keep them wet. Okay. So I got a nice hook set on that because his jaw is actually open quite a bit. Come on. There we go, hooks out. Thank you. Nice little release. Back in the water he goes. Woo! All right. Hey, Olive. Is that good? Is that okay? So in that uh, whole session there with that fish, um, with that shad, my freaking corker came off again. I will say they are an extremely comfortable boot. They're great for stocking foot waders. That's it. They stay on with on the heel section by this little nodule on the back of your boot. But whenever you get into mud or clay, anything like what is lining on the Annapolis River here, it's a lot of thick clay. Um, even if you're into the thick uh, uh, under sludge that sits on the bottom of the river, the sediment and stuff like that, in certain rivers, especially here in Nova Scotia, that sediment could be 12 to 14 inches or more. Uh, in a lake, it could be three, four feet. Uh, you're going to lose soles. And corkers are notorious for these things coming off. It's frustrating when they come off um, because a lot of the time, you don't even realize it. And they are expensive to replace at about 80 bucks. Um, if you're wearing the studded ones tonight, because I know I'm not on rock, I'm just wearing my regular Vibram sole ones here, and or whatever their patent is, but uh, they are terrible. These notches, it's like they're not powerful enough to retain the grab on the bottom of your boot. Corkers, you gotta sort this problem out because you've got a great product for comfort, but these soles coming off, it's, it's frustrating.
girl. So I'm going to close out now in basically saying I met some great people today on the river. Um, Greg, uh, Ryan, and unfortunately, sadly, I didn't get these two fellas' names, but there was uh, an older gentleman and a younger gentleman. Um, I don't know if they were family, but I met them on the way coming in, and the, uh, they gave me some tips with regards to some places for salmon fishing up around Cape Breton and uh, stuff like that. If you guys are watching the channel and you happen to catch this episode, Please comment, drop me your uh, your name and stuff, and uh, you know it'd be great to hear from you. It'd be great to know you guys are following the channel. Like I said, if you want to play a practical joke, it's a great fish to uh, to have somebody take home for the first time and try and fill it and uh, cook up. <laughs> They're very bony fish. Um, they are tasty, but the amount of work that goes into deboning them and stuff like that. Olive says they're bony. Olive says they're bony. Yes, 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 she does. Yes, she does. Oh, did you have fun tonight, girl? Did you have fun tonight? You saw some shad? Yeah, you saw some shad. <laughs> All right. Woo. I don't know if I'm cleaner or what, but hold on. If you are new to the channel and you want to stick around and keep up to date on uh, new episodes as I post, hit that subscribe button. And by all means, if you like what you see, throw a thumbs up. It helps with uh, finding my content on YouTube if you're ever searching for stuff. Those of you who have already subscribed, thank you. Uh, my heart goes out to you. And you know, I'm just excited to put this stuff together. And basically, Olive is too. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Olive's super happy to put this stuff together. She's super excited. She loves getting out with me. Olive, she says, hopefully for you, tight lines. Good night, guys. Bring it along. Go. Good girl. <laughs>